So if all of that is true, there is still a question. This has to be about drugs. If it, or, you know, booze, drugs, whatever it is. Because if they're not shot and they're not stabbed and they're all dead, um, it just strains common sense to believe they could have wound up in this predicament if it wasn't done to them without drugs. Uh, it is the elephant in the room. What is the position of your client? As I told you last night, Chris, I'm not in a position to comment on that at this time for a variety of reasons, not just on behalf of uh, Jordan. Um, and when and if the toxicology report comes out and when we get it, I'd certainly be happy to comment on it at that time. I'm not going to speculate about the activity and the behavior of other people who were not in the presence of my client um, at some point in time that evening or early okay. morning hours. And look, we both understand the dilemma. OK, if the tox comes out and they had whatever it is in it that makes this a more understandable situation, he's now going to be chasing his responsibility as opposed to being in front of it and owning what happened that night. Uh, and one of those is a much more satisfying thing in terms of credibility. You aware you're aware that that is the that is the dilemma here. No, I, I don't see it that way. And, um, you know, he has. Uh, an attorney, and I'm representing his best interests, and uh, he did nothing wrong, and that's that's what we're saying, that's what we're maintaining, and that's what we're going to say, no matter what comes back in that autopsy report. Right. Well, something's going to come back, and I will Absolutely. give you a platform at that time, and we'll discuss it, because things just never don't make sense. Eventually, it will make sense, and the responsibility will lie where it does, and we'll take it to its logical conclusion. John Pacerno, thank you very much Absolutely. for being with us Chris, again. Could, yes, sir. I would like to address. I would like to address those the, the phone calls and the text messages, if I could, since the reporter left that hanging out there. Go ahead, because the initial so, suggestion was he only got a Facebook message, and nobody was really trying to get him. Uh, Malik says that's not true because uh, the fifth friend says that uh, he was getting messages and he was trying to find them and he wasn't getting his messages answered either. So what is it? So I have sent your staff the records, his phone records, which I acquired this afternoon, and also the text message records. And during that period of time, um, the phone calls that came in on uh, the early morning hour after the game on the 7th and the early morning hours of the 8th, all the way to the 8th, and then all the way to the 9th when the police came, um, the only calls that came in were one from his dad, which we recognize the number, and you have the actual numbers. Mm -hmm. And then the other calls, there were eight of them that came in from what is a dummy number. He has a robo killer app on his phone. And so when calls come in that are unrecognized or for whatever reason, they read as this dummy number. I've dialed this dummy number myself. It's a non-existent number. You get a message saying whatever. It's a dummy number. And then the only other call that came in was a all zeros, a call that he blocked again from a RoboCop. What as far about as text? The text messages? Yeah. RoboTech. Ro yeah. As far as the text messages go, what you have, there are a series of incoming text messages. That's all we have. There are no outgoing text messages. So the corollary to that, what goes along with what makes sense to that is when you and I get a text message, typically we're going to respond. If somebody texts you and says, hey, these three guys are missing and they're your friend, you're going to respond. If Alex had said, the, uh, if someone had said to him, your, uh, the text message came in, why don't you respond? You would respond to your friend, right? That's what you would do. Maybe. The reporter wanted to twist my words when I said he didn't receive any messages. Mm. But And technically, I'm right. His phone received the messages. If you don't look at it, you did not receive the messages. I guess I should have said he didn't read the messages. Mm. And yes, as far as the text message from his friend... He did not tell me about that. And when I were informed of that, I asked him about that. And then he told me that's right. So there's two text messages, or excuse me, a Facebook message and a text message. Uh, and neither one he got before the police arrived at his home. All right. But the phone records that you have are consistent with him. If you look at them, uh, the calls were early in the morning. Yeah, and we have his them. dad called at noon and he picked up. He didn't pick up any in the morning. He didn't pick up any in the evening when he would have been sleeping. There were no other phone calls. And the text messages, the same way, there's no outgoing text messages those two days. Right. Which, as you know, 
who can stay off their phone for two days straight unless you're principally sleeping it out of it and you don't have your phone around you. Mm. So everything is consistent with what he's saying. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.